everyone, it's Casey. Um, I wanted to record an intro to this video because I wanted to tell you a little bit about the event and why it was special to me. And then I purchased a new microphone that I want to try out doing a voiceover on the video. So it's gonna be a little bit different format and at this point I don't know how well it's gonna work. I wrote out kind of a script um, for the vo voiceover part. I did not write a script for this, so I'm winging it. Um, but I really wanna get this video out there since the event took place a little while ago and other people's videos are coming out about it. Um, so I wanna get it out there. But I just wanted to share with you, this event was Queens of the Doll Isle. It's a show, a doll sh and teddy bear show that is put on by my friend Joe in Portland, Oregon. And prior to this spring event, it's um, always just been a one day doll and teddy bear show with a variety of different vendors from antique to artists to everything. Um, and Joe and I are somewhat now colleagues in our industry and we've become friends, which has um, been a wonderful friendship to help each other talk about our shows and help grow them and bounce ideas off of each other. So I really value our friendship. Um, and so maybe a year ago, maybe more, he was talking to me about wanting to add some other element to his show uh, because I have talked a lot on here and in other places about my mission to create a more community around doll the doll hobby, whatever that means, whether it's shopping or creating or, or whatever. And um, his intention isn't to create a huge convention or expo. He just was considering maybe some other element. And the element that he was telling me about was maybe a special guest um, or like a doll celebrity. And he, um, I don't know how his relationship with Muriel um, began, but he ended up working to uh, to bring her to the spring show. So over the last year or so, we've been talking about it and brainstorming. And I was really excited because if you don't know who Muriel is, she is the original artist creator of Strawberry Shortcake, Care Bears, um, Get Along Gang, and has had her hand in some other creations. And I was very excited, and that's why I kind of wanted to create this intro to tell you a little bit about my history in doll collecting, because it's very relevant to, to this show. So when I was in um, my teens, so probably, I don't know, 15, 16, I started collecting toys. But prior to that, as a child, my mom had sort of collected toys. She had collected McDonald's toy sets. and and some other things. So I was familiar with it. And as I got older, I would go thrifting and I would look for old vintage toys. And that was back in the days when you could find stuff like that. And I really gravitated towards strawberry shortcake. Those were toys that I had when I was a, um, a child. I was not a Barbie girl. I was um, more of a baby doll or a cutesy. I loved cutesy things like strawberry shortcake, Smurfs, um, all of those, those eighties toys were my favorite. And so I collected them for years. I had a huge collection. And when I moved out of the country, I sold a lot of that. I do, do still have my strawberry shortcake and Smurfs. I haven't seen them in a long time. I believe they're still in storage at my mom's. So I'm not even quite sure what all is still saved in there. Um, Cabbage Patch Kids, all of that, that eighties toys. So that was kind of my first collecting days were those toys. And I used to go to thrift stores and flea markets and, and build my collection. So it really, um, you know, like I said, started that for me. And then after collecting vintage toys, I started making my own dolls. So I started with Raggedy Ann's and then my cloth dolls that you know about. Um, and then I did Reborns and then moved into Blythe. So I really kind of had my hands in a lot of different doll genres as well. Um, so I didn't really know anything about the creator though of Strawberry Shortcake. I don't think, there's a bug flying around me. Um, I don't think any of us really did, I don't know, but Joe was sharing with me some of her story um, that she created them back in the 70s. 
but she worked for the company American Greetings. That is where she created those characters. Um, and she was just a um, paid artist, so she didn't retain the rights to any of those characters. Um, and that was just insane to me. And, and Joe has posted the full interview. I only have a couple of clips that I'm going to share, and so I don't think this story made it into the clips that I have. So I'll link to his video, so if you want to see the full interview that he did with her, um, you can hear this part, um, but I'm going to kind of just share it with you because it's relevant. She um, talked about how, you know, she was just the paid artist, so she didn't retain any of the rights. So all of the dolls that are sold now, all the strawberry shortcake, the merchandise, she does not get anything, no royalties from that. Um, and her life circumstances changed um, a few years ago and she needed some income. And um, she said, I think she said millennials, I can't remember what she said, uh, found her through social media and started to spread the word about her being the creator. And she was able to create a business now around what truly is her work. So you can buy earrings from her and you can buy other merchandise that she sells. And she also began touring around and doing shows and meeting her fans and selling more of her merchandise and doing these interviews. And I was just so blown away and inspired by her story because not only is her story amazing, but she was one of the coolest ladies that I've ever met. And that stupid fly is flying around. I told you I'm winging it. Um, she was so, uh, cause it, you know, when you, when you hear that story or people tell you that story, um, there's like a reaction of, how, how dare they, you know, how dare her not getting anything from her artwork, even, you know, I just bought a sweatshirt, a strawberry shortcake sweatshirt at Target, you know, it's, it's a very well known brand and she does not get royalties from that. So when you tell people that there is like maybe a negative reaction to that, but she was one of the most positive people that I've ever met. It doesn't seem to phase her and maybe it does sometimes, I don't know. Um, but she was so lovely and generous at the show um, and so warm and willing to spend time with each and every person. I just was really inspired by her, um, inspired to be someone like her in her, you know, senior years, getting to be such a celebrity and travel around and see places and be positive and just um, spread her light and her joy and not um, dwell on the past or any of that. So I just wanted to share that because that's what that, sh that really meant to me meeting her. And I was so grateful that Joe pursued that aspect of, um, the show so that we all could experience that. So, um, like I said, I'm going to show you elements and parts of the show that I'm going to do some voiceover on, but the general, um, way that the show worked is on Saturday night, there was a dessert social um, with Muriel and a meet and greet and a whole bunch of fun stuff. And then the actual vendor show is the next day where she also had a space set up um, to meet fans and, and sell her merchandise. And she was right across from me um, so that I could help with photos and, and things if needed, which I ended up really not being needed. <laughs> but I loved being across from her because I was able to watch um, her fans all day and her interact and there were some really special moments. So it was just a really special weekend, I feel like. Um, and I was also thinking a lot about my first doll shows that I did as a vendor and how I didn't ever really know anyone. And at the time, everyone was much older. I think I was probably in my 20s. And how it just never, it didn't always feel like my crowd and it's starting to feel that way now. So just like I'm always harping on um, creating a community of friends and friendship and being able to go to these shows and come back feeling inspired and that your cup has been filled up um, by these relationships is so important to me and I was really excited to see that happen at Joe's show this time around. So if you're not familiar with Queens of the Doll Isle, um, like I said, I'll link everything below. Um, he does shows currently in Portland and Seattle um, I can't at the moment off the top of my head think of when the next ones are, but I believe it's the next one is in Seattle in the fall. 
So I'll put all that information below if you're interested. I don't think he's having a special guest. I don't think one is planned for any future shows at this point, but I hope um, that he considers it because I thought it was amazing and fun and a wonderful weekend. So I hope you enjoy um, what I do have to show you and we'll see you all again soon. Bye. Alrighty, I've got my new microphone set up, so let's get on with the show. Attendees were welcomed outside of the Cedars Ballroom at the Embassy Suites Portland Airport. When they entered, they were greeted with a choice of seating based on each strawberry shortcake character. As they got settled, they filled out their door prize tickets and decided which prizes they wanted to enter. The prizes were amazing. Let's take a look at some of the prizes on the table. There were also prizes for the games that we were going to play a little bit later, and we checked those out as well. Muriel's table was set up with all kinds of goodies for her fans to buy and have signed by her. So many of them were her original art or art prints. She also had um, things like her earrings and stickers and t-shirts and some really, really cool things. As many of the guests came in, they went straight to lining up to meet Muriel. She had quite a long line that eventually we had to um, cut off so that we could get on with some of the other activities of the evening. But that was one of my very favorite things about Muriel. She took her time with everyone and really, from what I saw, made everyone feel special and listened to. Of course, there was also strawberry shortcake for a dessert event featuring the creator of Strawberry Shortcake, it made sense that that had to be the dessert of choice. A lot of people came in Strawberry Shortcake cosplay or outfits, which was also really, really fun to see. It made me think that this year I would love to be Strawberry Shortcake for Christmas. So fans got photos taken with Muriel. I took a bunch of photos. Um, it was super fun. Eventually it was time for everyone to make their final purchases, sit down, enjoy their cake and get ready for games. I want to uh, just kind of take a quick survey first. like. Raise your hand if you live in Oregon or Washington. Okay. Raise your hand if you live in California. Wow. We have at least one Canadian. Is anybody else from uh, another state or anywhere else? Cool. And how many of you are mainly a strawberry shortcake person. And how many are mainly a Care Bears person? Okay, good. You have any get along gang? <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're going to start by playing some games. Um, so if you get to show off your. Okay. No, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> okay. Name the division of American Greetings that Muriel worked for when she designed Strawberry Shortcake Care Bears. It was American Greeting Card 
cards division, the green cards? Uh, it, do you need a hint? <laughs> it has Cleveland in the name. Oh, oh gosh. I'm just, I'm just, we just talked about this earlier. You understand the brilliant our table. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm not spacing out. I, uh, that's okay. Cleveland, yeah, I'm sorry. Let somebody else answer it. Yeah, this one else. <laughs> Does somebody want to steal it? Yes. Correct. Those characters from Cleveland. Yes. Correct. <laughs> characters from <laughs> Easy question. Okay. Um, the purple pie men was scented like a specific kind of pie. What was it? <laughs> a specific kind of pie. The doll. Blackberry? No. Does anybody else set the table? No. Like apple? Yeah. It was apple. Ooh, <laughs> so, you're going to be just stick. Okay. Who's your favorite flavor? Okay. You want an easy or a difficult question? <laughs> okay. What character changed gender? Oh, oh I mean, I had it. I had it. Plum. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Who's <laughs> <laughs> your favorite character? Oh, or you could just pick one out. Pick one? We're going to give away some of these Goose Creek candles, which are very nice. Um, very nice. <laughs> The Raspberry Tart candle winner is Crystal Four Four Hints. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now the really good one, the really deluxe ones. First, we have this box lunch exclusive guy. Michelle Aiton. I love how you just like breeze in at the last second and win the most valuable prize. So we have another backpack, also a, a box lunch exclusive. I, it looks like E, Eva? Is it Eva? Yes, yes. do that really fast before we start the interview. So we're going to give away the centerpieces with the doll. Oh, wow. <laughs> so one person at each table will have a, before you look, let me, let me, so one person at each table will have a queen sticker on their chair. Ah, There's also one person in the room that will have a heart sticker. Whoa! The, the heart sticker wins the purple pie man from Curious. Wow. Uh, Casey, is there any particular place they should? Under the seat of the chair. Okay, so everybody can <laughs> Designed 39 strawberry shortcake characters. She has worked with American Greetings, 
Kenner, Hasbro, Toby, Fisher Price, Inesco, Mattel, and am I forgetting anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> And in addition to Starvation Arcade Care Bears and Get Along Gang, uh, she has also worked on Pop Lumps. Pop Lumps, yes, yes. She designed a, a, like a girlfriend for My Pet Monster, right? Yes. <laughs> and she, she didn't work on Barbie, but she worked for UNESCO and did a lot of the Barbie 35th anniversary. Yeah, I was the art director, the senior art director over uh, the licensing for the um, classic, um, the earliest uh, Barbie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your sis, you have a sister who is also a toy designer? Yes, yeah, so my sister is uh, two years older than me. Is that important? Yes. <laughs> because I got to be her boss. <laughs> she made the plush. She made the first strawberry shortcake doll. They said, if we're going to sell this as a licensing, we need a doll. Anyone know anybody can make a doll? I said, my sister can. She's not too busy. She has six kids. <laughs> and last but not least, she has made 640 dance videos. Hashtag kitchen dance. I'm one of, uh, this is important. I'm one of seven children. Uh, our first house we lived in was a 926 square feet. So there was nine of us, and uh, we didn't have a lot of toys, physical toys, but we had a whole lot of imagination. And uh, uh, my place was under the table where I wouldn't get trampled, and I would start drawing, I do probably when I was three or four, and I make things out of cardboard boxes and um, magazines, I kind of, you know, the Sears catalog. I make paper dolls, I find a figure, I go, okay, she would fit in most of these clothes, clothes and then I take the clothes and I fit it on that, and make uh, you know, the rugs and the wallpaper and cardboard boxes and make doll houses. Yeah, that's how I began my art career. <laughs> and then my classmate would say, draw me this and draw me that, right? And I draw cute stuff, and it was like the Campbell Soup. I thought I discovered the secret of cute. I was, it was like, wow, my secret. And so with a picture, I sent my grandmother who lived in Minnesota a card. Uh, I was eight years old. It was a bear dancing on stage in a ballet outfit. It was a cat bear. And I didn't know that until she had passed, my aunts had passed, and it came back to me. I said, holy cow, there was the first camera, right there. On Sunday, it was time for the show. We got down there around nine o'clock and began setting up our tables. And then as always, I take some time if possible to run around and film the different vendors to give you an idea of the things that you'll find at the show. So I usually start with my table that you're seeing right now, but I did try to get a little bit of everything. And as you'll see through the rest of the video, there was a little bit of everything for everyone, which I thought was excellent. There were antiques, there were doll artists, there were vintage toys and so much more. So if you are a doll collector, this show is amazing. And I hope you will try to make it to the next one because Joe does an excellent job producing the show. So I'm going to sign off now and let you watch just what I saw as I walked around.
Right before the doors opened, I caught Muriel doodling in her notebook. She really is a special person and I feel so lucky to have met her. It was time for the doors to open and I took a minute to check out the line forming. The following are some of my favorite photos from the show. I was happy to be away for the weekend with some of my greatest friends. I was happy to meet fans that stopped by. You all know who you are. And I was so happy for my friend Joe and the super success of his show and event. His team is awesome and I'm so glad to be a part of it. 